In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can take a picture with your A7 III, have it transferred automatically via Wi-Fi to your computer, import it into Lightroom, and edit it in 20 seconds without touching a single button, except the shutter. E aí, I'm Henry, a Brazilian photographer living in Italy, and in this channel we talk about photo, video, and tech. And today I'm gonna show you how you can download the new firmware for the Sony a7 III so that you can transfer automatically via Wi-Fi the files from the camera, the raw files, into your computer and have them imported into Lightroom automatically. Before it wasn't possible to do that with the a7 III because the firmware didn't allow for wireless transfers like this, but now with the new update with version 4.0 it is possible. And by the way, if you don't know what's tethering that I mentioned also in the title, it's when you connect your camera to the computer or to your phone and have the photos automatically transferred to it. It is very useful, especially in studio photography, be it product, food or portraits, because then you can check immediately after taking the picture in your computer if the focus was right, if the position was right. As usual, my videos are always divided in chapters. So if you want to skip around to some part you're more interested in, feel free to do it. The steps we're gonna follow are, first of all, we're gonna upgrade the firmware on the A7 III. Then, we're gonna install the server on the computer so that it can receive the files from the camera. I'm gonna show you also a quick tip of configuration on your router so that you don't have to reconfigure the camera every time you do it. And last, we're gonna configure Lightroom to import the files automatically and apply a preset so that you have all your pictures edited immediately. Quick note, in this video, I'm not gonna talk about the connection between the camera and a smartphone or a tablet. I'm just gonna talk about the connection with a computer and how to import it on Lightroom. If you want to know how to use on those devices, please check Mehran's video, which is really, really good, really detailed, and his channel also is pretty cool. All right, let's do it. All right, so first things first, we have to download the software and prepare everything here, cables and camera and everything. So I'm in the Sony website right now, you can find the link in the description below, and all you have to do is download the firmware, and then just be sure that the airplane mode is off, control the smartphone is off, and then the USB settings is set to mass storage. All right, so I'm gonna go through the installation process right now. Okay, and it's telling me already to connect the camera to the computer using the USB-C cable, so I'm gonna do that. All right, so the software checked what's the version of the camera and it's version 3.0 right now, and it's saying the version after the update is gonna be version four. So the camera turned black. All right, so after some minutes, update completed. It says now that it's in version 4.0, the camera restarted and I can see that it's on, so it, I think it's alive, so let's check. All right, confirmed, we're in version 4.0, so now we can go to our testing station. I'll switch also the camera to the main one now, so see you in a second. I think this is probably the only video ever that I'm gonna manage to mix my old life as a telecommunications engineer and photographer in the same place. So let's do it. All right, so now that the camera is upgraded, let's configure the server on the notebook. The software we're gonna use is called FileZilla Server, and just for you to understand what we're doing, we have the camera, which is gonna be the client, and the server, which is gonna be who's gonna receive these files. The client connects to the server, transfers the files, and then we're gonna be able to see it on the computer. Okay, so now just be sure that FileZilla Server, Service, and Administration Interface are selected. You can leave this one as default so that it starts together with Windows. Just go next and that's it. So you just have to run the interface and connect locally to the local host. It's going to say that the server is online and listening on port 21. Perfect. Now these act exactly like addresses in real life. So what you need is the address of the building or the house itself, which is going to be the IP address of the computer. And then we need the number of the door, which we already know, and it is 21. To discover the IP address on Windows, you're gonna come to the run and just use CMD and enter. And then you're gonna type IP config. And then you're gonna be able to see IPv4 address. And then it's gonna be here. In my case, it's 192.168.1.230. This is the IP address you're gonna want to configure on the camera. Now let's configure also the user that is going to be configured on the camera to access the server. Just go to edit users, add a new one, choose the name that you prefer, and be sure to choose a password, write your password in the designated field, and below in shared folders, choose which folder is going to be shared 
with the camera or to be used via FTP. After choosing this, everything is set, just click OK and you're done. OK, so now we're going to go to FTP transfer function, the new function that now is enabled with the new firmware. Then we're going to go down to server settings and we're going to set all the servers we want. In this case, I chose server one. I just put a name as Dell. In the destination settings, I configure the IP address we just discovered and the port 21. Down is directory settings, which is the folder that is going to be created when the files are transferred. And under user info settings are the settings about the user and password that it just configured. After this, you just go to OK, enable the FTP function, and it should be connected. Now a quick trick, this address is dynamic, meaning that every time you get home or you reconnect something, you might get a different address from the router at your home. But there's a way to make the router give always exactly the same address to each specific device you have at home. So especially when you want to use something like this that you need two devices connecting to each other, it's much easier if you have them fixed. So I'm going to show you how to connect into your router and how to configure for your computer to have always the same address so that you don't have ever to change something on the camera. So we're going to go back to the CMD, type IP config once more, and this time we're looking for the default gateway. This is the number, the address, you're going to put in the address bar on your browser. It's going to open a login box. This username and password you're probably going to find in the box that came with your router or with your provider. Now you have to search for whatever is said to be DHCP, which is what assigns the addresses. You're going to find everything that is connected right now and you're going to be finding a way to make it static and not dynamic. Now each router is going to be different, so you're going to have to check specifically for your model how to do it. But the important is to find the DHCP configuration. Okay, now everything is set, the camera is connected. You just have to take a picture and let's watch the camera send everything over FTP to the computer and store it in the folder that we configured on the A7 III. Now, usually on your computer, there's going to be a firewall running, meaning a piece of software that is there to block undesired connections from other devices and other IP addresses and origins. So what you have to do is you have to tell the software that you want to allow people to connect to the door 21. Specifically, if you want to be even safer, you want to say which exact address can connect to this door. But for now, let's just configure for the door 21 to be open so that the camera can connect. And later on, you can enhance the security a little bit more. So I'm just going to come to here to the search and I'm going to type firewall and come to the Windows Defender firewall. So inside here, you're going to be able to see allow an app or feature through Windows Defender firewall. Usually FileZilla server is not going to be here. So you have to come to allow another app, browse and just find FileZilla server interface and FileZilla server, add them to the list. And then they're going to appear here on the list and you can allow them for a private and public addresses. And that's it. You're good to go. Now try again to connect from the camera and if it works, fine, let's go to the next step. All right, now it's time to configure Lightroom. And usually if Sony cameras were supported for tethering inside Lightroom here, you could just come to File and then Tether Capture, Start Tether Capture and you will be good to go. But since it doesn't work, you have to come to Auto Import, Auto Import Settings. And then here you're going to enable Auto Import and you're going to say which folder should be monitored. So the same folder that you configured on the A7 III for the files to be deposited in the computer is going to be the one that is going to be monitored by Lightroom. So here I already chose pictures A7 III and then you can tell it to move these pictures to another location. So I just put another A7 III tethered test. You can configure it to add to a collection automatically and here you can set a preset to be applied automatically on the pictures when they are imported. It's the same when you're importing also from a SD card in which you can choose the preset you want to be applied. So it's kind of the same. So here I already chose one, OK. And then just be sure here in File, Auto Import, that Enable Auto Import is checked. If it is, fine. Now let's make a test. All right, if everything is working, you should see on the camera, the FTP symbol showing that the file is being sent. In the FileZilla server interface, you're going to see the connection, you're going to see how fast it's going and when it's finished. And then on Lightroom, you're going to see the picture popping up and being applied the preset. 
And that's it, now you're able to shoot wirelessly with your a7 III and control immediately the files inside Lightroom already with a preset applied. Now on average on my test it took around 20 seconds from taking the picture and having it ready on Lightroom. So this is not exactly a technique for you to be taking a picture and immediately looking and back. It's not that fast, it's better maybe if you use a cable properly. But it's much more practical and especially if you're doing food or product photography, you have the time of going to the computer, waiting some seconds to see the image and then readjusting what you need on the set. Alright guys, hope this video helped a little bit with your networking and photography skills at the same time. And if you have any comments, if you have any trouble doing what I told you today, just write me in the comments and I'm gonna try to help you out also. So I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao!